So I met my partner in 2011 and we kind of pretty soon after we met decided that we wanted to be together and blend our families, his daughter and my two kids. So uh, after dating for a year or two, we decided to move in together and move into his apartment where he had lived and he was a property manager. And we did that so we could save money to eventually buy a home. And in 2015, we were able to do that. We bought this home. I'm sitting in the backyard of it right now. It's a beautiful home in a beautiful neighborhood in a beautiful part of the city in which we live. We were both so grateful. Our children each had their own bedroom. We have a pool. We have a beautiful neighborhood to walk around in and we have fabulous neighbors. Our, our world was just getting bigger and brighter. Um, there was so much to celebrate. I had been a homeowner when I was previously married and he had never been a homeowner. So for me, it was like a second chance to, it was a, a, a refresh, like starting over. And for him, it was doing something new. Like I said, so much to celebrate. So we were in our home for a while. I think it was about a year. And he, I was teaching and he was still working as a property manager for the building in which we previously lived. And then he had other buildings that he was managing. He worked for a, a property management company. But not too long after we bought our house, he lost his job. He was in his late 40s at the time, I think around 48. And it couldn't have come at a worse time. It just, we're getting used to paying a mortgage. We were just getting used to paying for all of the utilities ourselves. And, you know, as apartment owners in the state where we live, you um, generally don't have to pay for utilities or you pay for minimal utilities. But now we were responsible for everything. Um, and our family was together. We had all three kids here. So we were scared and struggling. Uh, we had some savings, but definitely couldn't afford to keep our house on my teaching income. So a bit of panic set in and um, it really seriously took a toll on our relationship for a period of time. Just that fear, not knowing how we were gonna handle things. But this isn't a story about the fear. This is a story about how I put my trust into my partner, how I like doubled down on manifesting, how I doubled down on just knowing that it was all gonna be okay, and how things resolved. So he took some jobs that he did not wanna take he did what he needed to do in order to keep us afloat. He took a job literally shoveling dog poo at a kennel, and he had that job for a day. When he came home and he told me what he did and how he got paid, I don't know, $15 an hour to shovel poop, I was mortified and I, as much as I was grateful that he was willing to do that job, I. I didn't want him to continue to do that job because I knew over time that would be demoralizing to him. So we talked about that and he didn't go back. He just didn't go back. I don't even think he collected the paycheck for that, <laughs> for that day. <laughs> um, a period of time passed and he um, was, you know, he, since he managed, a, uh, was a property manager, he had a lot of experience in like, um, handyman related things, uh, um, minor construction and plumbing and minor electrical, minor electrical. So he took a job with a plumbing company as like a plumbing apprentice. And we thought that that would likely be a good, like a good route for him to take. Um, prior to us being together and before he lived here in this state, he had a um, 
a, another business of his own, but he wasn't able to get that business started here. So anyway, he worked as a, as a plumbing apprentice for a while. I think it was a few months and the pay was okay. The goal was that he would um, become a plumber. Uh, they make really good money and it's a job that's always needed. So that would have been something stable. And he loves working with his hands and he loves fixing things. So um, that would have been great. But he found out through the process of being the apprentice and going on all these jobs and having to spend his day with another plumber who was like half his age, <laughs> that this wasn't, this wasn't for him. He really needed to be working on his own, making his own schedule, doing his own thing. Um, not that he doesn't get along with people, but like me, he tends to be more of a, of a He's like an extroverted introvert, but um, he likes he likes his time alone to be with his thoughts. So anyway, he left the plumbing position and soon after that got a position with a company that is like a, a pest control company. And he trained with them and worked with them for also a few months. And this was a pretty decent job. He was given a company car. He was given training, he was given all of the tools he needed, um, and he was given a, like a clientele. He was given customers. He learned a lot, and he was into, he loves animals too. He loves being out in nature. So this was kind of feeling more like his cup of tea. But once again, working with other people and having to talk to his, you know, co-worker, <laughs> all day was draining on him. Um, so there were some pros and cons. But what's important is he was kept on being willing to do what he needed to do to like keep us afloat. And then one day we were out having lunch, he and I, um, just the two of us. And he was telling me about how like this company that he was working for was all right, but the skills that he was learning, like he had learned enough where he thought that he could do this on his own and that he could maybe start his own business. He realized it wasn't hard. He needed to get um, licensed by the state. He needed to buy some cages to do the trapping and he needed to have a truck. Well, he already had a truck and he was already like part of the way there. He had the skills, he had the truck. He just needed certification and some cages and to get a business license, right? So I told him, I said, go for it. Like do the thing you wanna do because it would give him freedom. He could set up his own schedule. Um, try it, like what's the worst that could happen? So he did. <laughs> He didn't do it because he listened to me, but you know, when you're in a relationship with somebody, you, you become inspired by them uh, and you trust one another. So that was in 2016 or 2017 and we're still in the house. We didn't have to give up our home. His job loss at 48 years old turned into a thriving business because he believed in himself and because I believed in him, because I encouraged him, because I stood by him. I'm not saying that it was easy. It, there was a struggle in the beginning. We were, you know, we still had financial issues. We were still, you know, doing everything we could to pay our bills. And there were some bills that didn't get paid for a period of time. But my point is, and the, the thing that I want to hit home here is that he took what could have been a disaster. We could have lost our home. If we weren't strong enough and didn't love each other enough, we could have lost our relationship, which would have meant our children would have lost their home. He didn't allow any of that to happen. He built a business out of loss and he loves what he does. 
His business allows him to work whatever schedule he wants. He has met fabulous people. He has returning customers. He has raving reviews. <laughs> and it also allows him time because what he really is is not a pest control company. What he really is is a musician. And he's, you know, working on producing his first album right now with his friend. Uh, his lifelong friend from, from childhood and even though his job is stinky and dirty and icky and even though his once beautiful truck is now like stinky and dirty and icky <laughs> his job is his company what he started is what saved our home and I'm making this video today because well, first of all, because I want to share stories. You know, all these stories of our lives are what help us become who we are. But I want to share the story with you because um, I know that there are people out there who are having similar struggles and I want you to know that it is possible to turn nothing into something. <laughs> possible to turn struggle into success. and. There should never be a point in your life where you just completely throw in the towel. I talk about this in this other video that I'll have posted at the end, where at the end of every struggle, there's something beautiful. At the end of every fall, there's getting up again. And you can do that individually on your own. Sorry, there's a bead. <laughs> you can do this within a relationship. You can do this with your children. There's, there's never an end to improving your life. It can always get better. So I think that's really all I need to tell you today. I just want you to remember that if you're going through something that's really, really hard, just like allow yourself some time to grieve the loss of whatever that was. You had to grieve the loss of his stability that he had. We had to grieve the loss of the trajectory that we thought we were on. But after that, after we grieved, we just like put ourselves back together and got, got back to work and solving the problem. And there's, that's going to happen over and over again throughout your life. So if you've made it this long and you're here at the end of the story, I want you to remember for you, don't forget. Don't forget that you can fix it, whatever it is, you can fix it. It'll get better, I promise you. I'm still sitting here in the house that I thought I was gonna lose a number of years ago. And it's my sanctuary, and it's his sanctuary. You can do it. <laughs>